For the 29th time last year, staff at the Raptor Center would try in vain to save the sickened symbol of our freedom. Since late October, 13 bald eagles, all suffering from lead poisoning, were taken in by the Raptor Center. With no snow cover to conceal the gut piles of field-dressed deer, eagles feed freely. Lead fragments from hunter's bullets are causing an unintended second death. In 1991, a nationwide ban of lead shot for waterfall hunting was implemented due to researchers reporting heavily hunted wetlands as locations of high risk of lead poisoning for waterfowl and bald eagles. So why has the prevalence of lead poisoning in bald eagles not changed with the lead shot restrictions? The bald eagle is in the phylum chordata and class aves. It nests on the edges of rivers and lakes. The bald eagle is considered a raptor and hunts and feeds on fish, waterfowl, other birds, turtles, rabbits, and carcasses of dead animals such as the white-tailed deer. A long-term study that was recently completed at the University of Minnesota's Raptor Center looked at lead poisoning in bald eagles. They hypothesized that spent lead from ammunition, which is present in field residues of white-tailed deer, represented a source of lead exposure in eagles. Researchers have described seasonal trends in which most cases of bald eagles admitted for rehabilitation occurred coincidentally with deer hunting season. An estimated 10% of the 200 to 250,000 deer harvested each year in Minnesota are being fatally wounded but not retrieved by hunters. Lead-based ammunition is widely used in game hunting because of its ballistic qualities and cost effectiveness. However, this type of ammunition produces a great deal of bullet fragmentation, so lead contamination occurs in both carcasses and viscera of animals shot. Pure lead bullets often foul the rifle, so to overcome this problem, bullets have a copper jacket around the core. The study group consisted of injured or free-ranging bald eagles admitted to the Raptor Center from January 1996 to December 2009. Data collection included recording the admission date, recovery location, age, and sex of the eagle. Lead concentrations in blood and the presence or absence of metal foreign bodies within the GI tract were measured upon admission. Eagles were first grouped based on where they were recovered from either the rifle zone or shotgun zone, which represent the two legal types of firearms for deer hunting in Minnesota. Age was separated into three groups that included hatch year, eagles less than one year old, immature, eagles ranging from two to five years, and adults, eagles greater than five years old. Cases were classified as having elevated or background lead levels based on results of blood values. So what were the results? Of the 1,277 bald eagles admitted to the Raptor Center in the 13-year period, 334, or 26%, were identified as elevated lead level cases, with 12 dead on arrival. Adults were the predominant group admitted and appears to be related to aggressive behavior of bald eagles at scavenging sites during the winter. Adult eagles would have the first choice of consuming flesh from carcasses and would likely choose easily accessible tissues at the bullet wound sites. There was a 58% increase observed of eagles with elevated lead levels during the first 13 weeks after the onset of deer hunting season, starting in October with the highest values in December and January. Eagles recovered from the rifle zone, which is the firearm with great amounts of fragmentation, had a higher risk of lead toxicity. Although the exact location of exposure could not be determined due to the variation in time of exposure and the onset of clinical disease. This study showed that elevated lead level cases increased 5% per year. Only 34 eagles with elevated lead levels had radiographically visible metal objects in their stomachs. This small portion of eagles with visible foreign bodies could be due to the fact that birds of prey cast undigested food materials within approximately 12 to 24 hours after ingestion, and smaller fragments could have eroded by gastric acid. So what is the point of this research? What we want to achieve really is to present these to people, this to hunters. This has nothing to do against hunters. This has anything to do with the sport itself. It's just what they're using. The, the bullets itself and there are non-toxic options that they can use and in particular eagles and other wildlife scavengers can be free of.